Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Steve Down. This is my guitar. This is a brand new series looking at Mule by Kenny Burrell, taken from his album from 1963 called Midnight Blue. We've looked at three Kenny Burrell tunes so far, two of which have been from that album, Chitlins and Midnight Blue, but we also took a look at his version of My Favourite Things as well. So do go back and take a look at those series um, if you want to get the full Kenny Burrell experience. For today, we are looking at Mule, uh, which is the second track off of this album, Midnight Blue. It's a 12-bar blues in C, uh, and it's a major blues. Um, we'll get into the harmony a little bit later. If you would like to get the transcription and the backing track, then Patreon is the place to go to do that, and you can find the link um, here um, on the screen below. And there you'll get the backing track, the transcription, and any of the exercises, chord scales, arpeggios, examples, etc. Um, there. And anything else and everything else that you see on my YouTube here. Now, this series was voted for by my patrons. They had the choice of a John Schofield tune, um, a George Benson tune, or this one. And the overwhelming response was this tune itself. So this is a very popular one. Um, I'd like to say a big thanks to my patrons, um, especially ones that voted for it. Um, here's the list of the ones that have just joined up in the last four weeks whilst I've been on a break. Cliff, Marty, James, Kate, Greg, Robin, Lefteris, Kevin, Kavay, or Keva, uh, Walter, Sabajit, Steve, Mick, John, Lewis, or Louis, George, William, Reggie, Daniel, Marcel, Simon, Randall, and Mikhail. Thank you, everyone, guys and girls, for keeping the the, uh, the wheels on the bus, so to speak, here. Um, and thanks so much to, just for the support. It really does mean a lot. If you would like to support me, then Patreon is the place to go to do that. The link is still on the screen below. But you can also buy me a coffee if you want to do a one-off uh, thanks for the video or whatever. Um, and don't, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe. And if you want to, hit the... Uh, the bell and the comment section below if you have anything to say. Um, I always like to have a chat with the people that are watching this, especially if they are pointing out something that I missed or might have got wrong. So um, do pop that in the comments below. Um, we're going to take a look at the first part of this tune. So that's just going to be the head of this tune. So here is the first four bars. Okay, so as I said at the top of this um, video, it is a 12 bar blues in C and it's a major blues. Um, so the chords that are being used in this head are C, F and G7. So C7, F7 and G7. Um, so C7 and F7 are secondary dominance and G7 is a diatonic dominant. Uh, secondary dominant is basically where you take a chord that is diatonic and make it into a dominant seventh when it shouldn't be, or diatonically speaking, shouldn't be. Um, so C7, obviously, in the key of C, it would normally be a major seventh or a major chord, and F would normally be a major or a major seventh chord, not a dominant seventh. We've made both of those, or rather Kenny has made them both dominant sevenths, and so those are known as secondary dominants. Obviously, G7 is a diatonic dominant seventh chord is always a seventh um, so that obviously isn't a secondary dominant now in this head we're only using the chords of one four and five and it, it is in the classic format four bars of c two bars of f two bars of c one bar of g one bar of f and two bars of c at the end that is a classic format there's nothing kind of really spicy going on in there um, but don't be fooled he does get spicy a bit later on um, there are a lot more added chords that are either alluded to or directly referenced uh, and we'll be getting into that as we get through this series. So we've started with the first four bars. What Kenny is using here is a straight minor blues scale, so C minor blues scale and that's this. So the main thing I want to talk about here is the composition of the head. What he's doing here is he is using a repeated pattern and slightly changing it each time. And then at the end of the four bar phrase, he's using a completely different line. And this is something that kind of call and response thing that you'll get a lot in blues, especially in jazz. So that's your call. That's the response or should be a hammer on there. There's hammer ons and pull offs instead of slides are really nice um, and then it does it again very very close to the first one and then completely different in the, the fourth bar and 
then we're into the next chord. Um, but there, the main thing here to realize is the fact that he is using call and response and he is using a similar melody line all the way through and just ever so slightly varying it. And there's nothing particularly spicy about it other than the blues scale that is there, the minor blues scale. So here's an example of me using this technique. I suggest you download the backing track from Patreon, hint, hint, and have a go yourself. Let's move on to the next two bars where he moves to the four chord of F7, the secondary dominant. Here we go. Okay, so here, the main thing to realize is that he is using the F7 or dominant seventh arpeggio, which is this. And he's using that for his vehicle. So all of these notes here, all taken from the F7 arpeggio. So um, A and the octave up as well, the E flat and also the C. So, okay. The interesting thing is the fact that he's not using the C minor pentatonic or the C blues scale as a one scale fits all thing. Um, and that is something that a lot of blues players who are starting out um, seem to think. Um, and yes, you can shoehorn it in. Yes, you can make it work if you're very careful with your note choice. But it's more sophisticated if you refer to some of the what we call chord tones in your improvising just to make it a little bit more sophisticated. So in when you reach the F chord, the chord of F actually contains three notes that are already in the C minor pentatonic anyway. So F, C and E flat. So they're already there. The only one that's missing is the really vitally important major third of F, which is A. And that's what Kenny uses here. Okay, so it's well worth making sure that you learn that arpeggio and you start referencing that major third. Here's an example of me doing that. get on to the double stops where you use two more or more we will we will get onto the double stops a little bit later on that's where you use two notes rather than one note at the same time um, but for the time being just know that they're there we've got fourths and also thirds there as well let's take a look at the next two bars where we go back to the c chord Okay, so here the main thing that I really want to take a look at is his mixture of minor and major. Um, not necessarily minor and major pentatonic, although that is really useful to learn. So here is the minor and the major pentatonic. The main thing to think about here is the fact that he is mixing a minor tonality and a major tonality, not at the same time, but just one after the other in his phrasing. And that's important because it does give some tension and it gives more opportunity for resolve. Um, so what I'd like to show you here is what Kenny is doing. So he starts off with some double stops and he is going major here because he has got that E natural there, and that is the major third of C. And then at the in the next bar, he's going minor pentatonic there. And so he's mixing, he's going major and then minor. Um, now he's doing it in a very simple way. So one bar major, one bar minor. Now this is something that you could do quite easily yourself um, and just do one bar major, one bar minor or vice versa. But it doesn't always work like that. And we'll see later on that you can actually mix them in the bar itself as well. So, um, but if you're starting off uh, and you're a beginner at this, then do one bar major and one bar minor or vice versa. And that should work for you. Here's an example of me doing that. Um, I highly recommend you give it a go with the backing track. Here's that. Okay, let's move on to the next two bars, bars nine and 10. And here we're going over the G7 chord and the F7 chords. So chords five and chords four, respectively. Here's that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so here the thing to note is the fact that Kenny isn't necessarily using a G7 arpeggio over the top of this, but he is alluding to some of the notes that are contained within that arpeggio, the notes of G and F. So, so it starts off G and F. Yeah, we've got that extra note kind of an accompanying at the top, but the two main notes are G and F, which are contained within the arpeggio of G7, G, B, D, F, and G as well at the top. Um, and then, interestingly, goes back to the C and brings an E in there, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then at the end there, we've got the F and the G at the end there. Again, just hammering home. I know it's G and I'm going to reference that. And it does give a certain sophistication to it. And then when we get to F, similar thing. Okay, you can hear that that is F there without hearing the F chord underneath it or having a bass note underneath it. Um, and he's using a repeated line just to hammer home again. And we've got those notes A and C and then E flat. Okay, no F in there, interestingly. So he obviously you know, it just shows you how F's unimportant in um, describing an F7 chord, which is interesting. Here's an example of me referencing those notes in the G and then also directly outlining the F7 chord. So here's an example of that. And in the last bar here, we've got some double stops. Um, and this is a good opportunity for me to talk to you about double stops. Kenny's using some fourths. Okay, so here is where he would have been deriving those from. Um, it's taken from the minor pentatonic scale, which is harmonized in fourths, and that's this. And then the you'll see that he commonly uses these thirds. Now, they obviously do get used an awful lot. Um, if we were really pedantic about it, we'd say that this is kind of taken from the C Dorian scale and it's harmonizing the Dorian scale in thirds. And so that's this. Obviously you can use those ones that are down here or the ones that are up further as well. But the ones that sound the best over the top of this are. And you'll see in my example in a second that I use a pivot note. Okay, and that's a really bluesy thing to do is so you use that pivot note there because it creates tension as you go through the melody line. Okay, some nice arc of a melody creating some tension there in the middle there to be resolved and then back again so um here's an example of me doing that Okay, well done for getting through all of that if you did watch right through to the end. So hopefully you've learned the importance of the C blues scale. Hopefully you've learned the importance of the C minor blues scale, the F arpeggio, alluding to the G but not using an arpeggio necessarily, mixtures of minor and major tonalities and scales, the uh, minor and major pentatonic, and then also harmonizing your Dorian scale as well to bring out um, some more bluesiness um, in your playing with some double stops. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed that and that you've got something out of this. Don't forget to go over to Patreon to get the chord scale arpeggio and example packs and then also the transcription um, of Mule and the backing track as well. So there's a lot over there, not just for this series, but for every series you see on my YouTube channel. And until next time, which will be two weeks from here, happy practicing. Bye.